on the back, in, in the back of the room. The first topic of chapter three are complex numbers. Complex numbers are in the realm of real numbers. or of the number system, I should say. Complex numbers have this form. That's a complex number. It's made up of an integer That's what the A is. And then these type are called imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers are just those. We can't graph them. They exist in the third dimension of the uh, Oh, the nth dimension of, of the ether. So where do they come from? Where does I come from? In engineering and the sciences, the, the radical is used a lot. For example, the square root of four we know is two. Why do we know it's two? Yeah, because four is made up of two times two. It, there's a pair of numbers. Even if we can't find a perfect pair, we know the value exists. But, what if you had a negative number? If you had a negative radical, there is nothing that'll work. So what we do is if you have a negative inside there, we replace it with the letter I. So basically this number is written as negative one, times four, which becomes square root of negative one times the square root of four. Square root of negative one is I, square root of four is two. So the answer becomes two I. square root of negative seven. Whenever you have a negative inside a radical, a, an even root radical, take it out and put an I. So this negative inside the radical becomes the I. Or to, so it doesn't get confused, you could put in this case, you could put the I in front of the radical. What would this be? Yeah, so we have i square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6. So it's 6i. Like Let's look at example 1.
radical negative seven. We did that already. Radical negative 16 equals 4i, very good. Negative radical negative 13 Very good, negative i radical 13. Because you cannot distribute inside there. You can't, those negatives don't cancel. If it's negatives outside, the negatives outside. Negative radical negative 64. Yeah, so the negative is out there. This becomes an I. Square root of 64 is 8. So it's negative 8I. And lastly, negative 40I, uh, negative 48 square root. So what's your answer? Nope. So, okay, you're right. This is good so far, but you're not done yet. Can this be simplified? Yeah, so 48 breaks down into four goes into four once, four goes into eight twice, two times two, six times two, three times two. So we have one, two, two times two times two times two times three. We have a pair of twos there. We have another pair of twos and the three inside there. So it's four I radical three. Always try to simplify your radicals to see if you can go any further. All right, now we're gonna talk about the algebra of radicals and imaginary terms. Remember, whenever you use the word algebra of, all it means is can it do these four operations? Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Example two, A. We have eight plus six I plus three plus two I, and then B, four plus five I minus six minus three I.
Adding and subtracting follow the same rules we have always used. Especially when you have parentheses. Can we do anything inside the parentheses? No, they're not like, not, not like terms. So we have to get rid of the parentheses. We can get rid of the first one because it doesn't have a coefficient. And since the other one has a positive and no coefficient, we can just drop the second one. Combine like terms, eight plus three is 11. Six plus two is eight I. So it's 11 plus eight I. Now, when you have negative between them, the first one you can drop, there's nothing in front of it, so it's 4 plus 5i. But since the second one has a minus, we have to distribute it to each term inside the parentheses. So negative times positive is negative 6. Negative times negative is a positive 3i. Then combine like terms. 4 minus 6. 6 is bigger than 4, it's negative. The answer is negative. 6 minus 4 is 2. 5i plus 3i. So 5 plus 3, they're both positive. So it's 8i. And there's your answer. So... But sometimes we have to first convert the negative radicals. Well, what if we had this? What if we had that? Right, you have to do, remember, order of operations. Can you do anything inside the parentheses? Yes. Square root of negative 4 becomes 2i. Inside here, we have negative 2 minus square root of negative 9 is 3i. Square root of negative 1 is i. So always do, can you do anything inside the parentheses? Yes, we can convert these to imaginary numbers. Now we get rid of the parentheses. No coefficients. No coefficients. So it's a plus, I could just, so positive times negative is a negative. Negative two. Positive times a negative is a negative. Three, I. Negative times negative is a positive. Three. Negative times a positive is negative i. Combine like terms. 3 minus 2 is 1. Plus 3 is 4. Two i minus 3 i is negative 1 i. Negative 1i minus i 
is negative to I. So that's adding and subtracting uh, uh, complex numbers. Now multiplying complex numbers. We could do it like this. Like that, or any combination. Example three, look at B first. One plus two I, one plus three I. Here we have to use the FOIL technique because we're multiplying binomials times binomials, two terms by two terms. One times one is one. Positive times positive is positive. One times three I is three I. Positive times positive is positive. Two I times one is two I. Positive times positive is positive. Two times three is six. I times I is I squared. Note, I cannot have an exponent. I cannot have an exponent in your final answer. So what is I squared? Well, what is I? What is I equal? square root of negative one. So if I square both sides, what happens to the square root and the square? They cancel. So wherever you see an I squared, that becomes a negative one. Three I plus two I is five I. I squared is negative one. Positive, so it's negative six. Combine like terms. So it's negative five plus five I. another example like that. Go ahead and try to do it. 
All right, let's look at this. So negative times positive is negative. Three times four is 12. Negative times negative is positive. Three times five is 15. I, that does it for this one. Positive times positive is positive. Two times four is eight, and there's an I. Positive times negative is negative. Two times five is 10. I times I is I squared. Combine like terms. So we have negative 12, they're both positive. 15 plus eight is 23. Since the I squared becomes what? All it really does is change the sign in front of it, in front of that number. That's all it really does. An I squared simply changes the sign in front of the coefficient. Negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2. And there we have it. Three minus seven I squared. Oh, that equal. No. How'd you get 10? Oh, I'm oh, no, no, no. No. So now what does this mean when it's squared? What's times two? Right. It's whatever's underneath it. It's this parenthesis is times itself. So it's three minus seven I times three minus seven I. This tells us how many times we have to multiply. It. Then from there, we do what we've been doing. Distribute, distribute our foil. Three times three is nine. Positive times negative is negative. Three times seven is 21 I. Negative times positive is negative. Seven times three is 21 I. Negative times negative is positive. Seven times seven is 49. I times I is I squared. Combine like terms. Negative 21, negative 21 is negative 42. Since they're both negative, the answer is negative. All I squared does is change the sign of its coefficient. Since it's positive, it becomes a negative. That's the only thing a negative one will do is change sign. So combine like terms. Negative 49 plus 9. 49 is bigger, so it's negative. 49 minus 9 is 40. Minus 42i. And there's that answer. Believe it or not, questions like this one cause the most trouble. So what do you got to do first?
convert these to imaginary numbers. So this one becomes what? 4i. And this one becomes 5i. Now we can multiply them. 4 times 5 is 20. i times i is i squared. Again, all i squared does is change the sign of the coefficient. So it's negative 20. That's the answer. What if you had this? What if you had that? We can combine them now. All right, so first thing I do is convert this one. So and leave the second one alone because you, you can't do anything inside the parentheses. Now we just multiply. Three times four is 12, I. Positive times negative is negative. Three times two is six. I times I is I squared. The I squared simply changes the sign in front of its coefficient. So from negative to positive. So the way we write the answer is 6 plus 12i. Because complex numbers are always written as a plus bi. That's the format it's got to be in. So far so good? Remember what I said earlier, that I cannot have an exponent at all. But it's possible that this happens. What would it equal? Two? Two. I don't know yet. It's not going to be zero. It's got to be something. But let's figure this out. Let's figure let's do this inductively. We know that I is equal to I, or I is equal to square root of negative one, or it's just I. I squared is equal to negative one. Let's build up from this one. So I cubed is the same thing as i times i squared. So we have i. i squared is negative 1. So i cubed becomes negative i. i to the fourth is i times i cubed. So we have i, i cubed, we just figured out was negative i. So i times negative i is negative i squared. i squared is negative one. So negative, negative is positive. So i to the fourth is one. Let's do four more. i to the fifth is i times i to the fourth, which i to the fourth is one. So i times one is i. i to the sixth is i times i to the fifth. 
I to the fifth is I. I times I is I squared becomes negative one. I to the seventh is I times I to the sixth. So it's I, I to the sixth is negative one. So it's negative I. I to the eighth is I times I to the seventh. I to the seventh is negative I. Negative I times I is negative I squared. I squared was negative one. Negative, negative one is one. So we see they, they repeat themselves in groups of four. It goes, I is the first one. I squared is negative one. I cubed is negative I and i to the fourth is positive. i to the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So they always repeat a pattern. What's the pattern? i, negative one, negative i, one. Easiest way to remember this is think about if you want to race, what would you yell? i won, i won. I won, I won. The middle two are negative. So if you won something, you said, I won, I won. So, and the middle two are negative. So how do we figure this out? Since they repeat in groups of four, whatever our exponent is, divide it by four. Four. Four goes into 25 six times with one left over. We only want to look at the remainder. Four goes into 25 six times. We only, only want to look at the remainder. So the remainder, if the remainder is one, two, three, or zero, then your value is either going to be I1, I1, the middle two are negative. So for our example, I to the 25th, the remainder is one, so the answer is I. Example four, A, I to the 37, I to the 58, I to the 75th, I to the 80th. So for this first one, we have to take 37 and divide it by 4. So 
So four times nine is 36. Subtract those, you get one. So the remainder is one. What does that make my answer? I. Because the remainder was one. Very good. Four goes into 58. Four goes into five once. Which leaves us 18. Four goes into 18 four times. So the remainder is two. Since the remainder is two, the answer is negative one. I to the 75. Four goes into seven once with three left over. So four times nine is 36. That's too big. So four times eight is 32. The remainder is three. So the answer is negative I. Four goes into 80 20 times. No remainder. So the answer is positive one. So when, whenever you deal with higher exponents for I, remember that conversion chart. The last thing for this section are called conjugates. All a conjugate means is that if I had a plus bi, the conjugate would be a minus bi. The conjugate is simply change the sign in front of the i. Change the sign in front of the I term, the I. And then multiply. 4I, what's its conjugate? Negative 4I, very good. If I multiply these two together, what do I get? Positive times negative is negative. Four times four is 16. I times I is I squared. What does I squared do? Just change the sign in front of it. So it becomes positive 16. Like in example five, we have eight I, its conjugate is, or, is negative 8i, negative 64i squared. That changes the sign, so it's 64. It becomes more apparent when we have these type of equations. What the conjugate is going to do, it's going to remove the I term. Conjugates will remove the I value. Let's look at this. Five times five is 25. Positive times negative is negative. Five times seven is 35I. Positive times positive is positive. Seven times five is 35 I. Positive times negative is negative. Seven times seven is 49 I squared.
combine like terms, what happens to these two? They cancel out. So we get 25 minus 49i squared. The i squared changes the sign in front of it. And you just notice there's no more i's. There aren't any more i's. The shortcut to find these, the shortcut to find, if you're asked to find a conjugate, the way we got 70, 74 is take, if you're multiplying by conjugates, take the first term and square it. Plus the second number in front of the i, square that. And add them together. That's exactly what we got there. So what would this one be? What's the answer? Take the first square it, add the coefficient, nine plus 16 is 25. That's the answer. Whenever you must play conjugates, just take the numbers in front of it. Don't, don't worry about the signs because when you square them, it becomes positive. And take the numbers and square them. Why do we need conjugates? Because we cannot divide by I. You cannot divide by i. So to get rid of the i on the bottom, we multiply by its conjugate. So top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So we have five squared plus two squared on the bottom, the shortcut. And on the top, we have to do it all out. Three times five is 15. Three times two is six I plus 20 I plus eight I squared. So we have 15, six plus two is eight I. That becomes a minus eight. 25 plus four, 15 minus eight is seven. 25 plus four is 29. And there you have it. So whenever you have an I on the bottom, multiply by its conjugate. And that does it for that section. Okie dokie, everybody. Then I'll see you tomorrow for any questions. Uh, we may meet this Friday, depending on how far we get. Because next week is our last full week because week after that the fifth week we have fourth of july right in the middle of our class so i know some of y'all will not want to come to school on that fourth <laughs>